guys, thank you so much for joining me in another video. So as you can tell based on the title, today we are talking about Phoebe Philo's first collection, first runway collection at Celine. So we're talking about spring summer 2010. And I really want to talk about this idea of contemporary minimalism and make reference to this article from The Gentlewoman. This was a magazine. Phoebe Philo was featured as the first cover. The article was titled The Modernist Designer Phoebe Philo and the Return of Modern Fashion. If you're not familiar with The Gentlewoman, it's this magazine where it describes itself as celebrating women of style and purpose. It offers a fresh, intelligent perspective on fashion that's focused on personal style, the way women actually look, think, and dress, featuring ambitious journalism, photography of the highest quality. It showcases inspirational women through its distinctive combination of glamour, personality, and warmth. The first edition of this magazine, we have Phoebe Philo on the cover, and I think that is of no coincidence. So we're going to talk about this concept of the gentlewoman, how Phoebe Philo talks about this idea of contemporary minimalism and look at her first runway collection at Celine. Before I get into the details of this collection, Phoebe Philo was actually interviewed by Susie Menkes and she was asked about this collection. This is your first time back on the runway in four years. How do you feel? Phoebe Philo responds with, what I've done today really comes from my stomach. It's a real gut response to fashion. I like my clothes to be practical, functional, easy, beautiful, and wearable. But there's a bit of an alter ego. There's a bit of a woman I hope one day I could be. This response to fashion I think is a really important point that I really want to emphasize and I think upon reading this now it's like of course she is right. We have to think about what fashion was during the 2000s. A lot of the luxury houses like the major big luxury houses owned by LVMH and Caring. The 2000s really saw this resurgence of glamour, this love for excess. We saw a lot of celebrities, red carpet culture, very bold provocative styles were what was in we saw a lot of figure hugging dresses, low rise, we saw crop tops, we saw glitter. I remember being a teenager, I'm 32 years old, so you do the math, but I was old enough to remember this era as like one of the most epic eras in fashion. I totally get why Gen Z, they love the Y2K era, but even past the early 2000s, fashion was going in so many different directions. We saw boho, a resurgence of grunge, and like kind of a combination of the two, and even like more contemporary versions of these brands. Think like Ed Hardy, Juicy Couture, Von Dutch, this decade was such an epic period. But I think by 2010, when it came to fashion, I think we were looking for something different. I think people were looking for something new. 2000s fashion really could just be its own topic. But if we're being real, like minimalism as an aesthetic was no longer at its height, at its peak. It definitely had lots of rises in the 90s. I did a whole video on that topic, but like a lot of these big brands that made names for themselves in the 90s, they were struggling in the 2000s. And a lot of the American sportswear brands that really emerged in the 80s, really dominated the 90s, they were no longer at their peaks. While I do think that minimal aesthetic is something that we did see with other designers, and I think another wave of a minimal aesthetic would emerge. Phoebe Philo coming in with this collection, Spring Summer 2010, it really ushered in a new era for the brand. And I think arguably like this concept of the gentlewoman. So now let's look at this collection. And I first wanna look at silhouettes, specifically the minimalist silhouettes that we're seeing here. We're seeing a lot of clean and very like streamlined silhouettes, this emphasis on simplicity and elegance. The focus was really on creating timeless pieces, but were equally modern for the time. When we look at late 2000s fashion, there was this preference towards more of a streamlined tailor silhouette, often highlighting the body's contours. We saw in the later 2000s more form-fitting designs. The body contouring style of clothing was something that we did see. We're seeing a softening. We're seeing sort of a draping, a little bit more of a looseness with this collection. In later collections, we'll see her really go in more of an oversized direction with a focus on volume. We're gonna see that in later collections, but Phoebe Fellow is bringing sort of a softness here, even though the clothing looks very precise. What I love about these silhouettes is she's incorporating more unconventional and almost unexpected details, be it like the asymmetric cuts, sort of these like deconstructed elements that add more interest to these very minimal designs. We're seeing dresses with cropped shoulders, we're seeing nude contrast pockets, very sharp and precise. We're not seeing that boho vintage vibe that we saw in the 2000s. Looking more to the future here. We're seeing leather skirts, 
dresses, leather trims to outline the silhouette. Second point I want to talk about here is relaxed tailoring. The Phoebe Philo really introduced here a relaxed and more effortless approach to tailoring, a little bit more of a loosening and oversizing of shapes, not to the extent of some of her later collections, but we're seeing wide-legged trousers, dresses that flow against the body were very key elements of this collection. This collection was actually inspired heavily by men's military wear. She referenced the armholes of men's military shirts and jackets. We definitely see that in a lot of the jackets and even the dresses here. And I think this sort of relates to this idea of empowerment. In the Gentlewoman article, she actually cites throughout the whole article, her difficulties at Chloe, you know, having to travel to London, to Paris, and trying to manage her life, trying to have a baby, maintain a relationship with her husband. But at Celine, she would change this. So this is a quote from the article. Today, a purposeful, more grounded Phoebe is also using this fresh start at Celine as an opportunity to build the ideal company structure, one that will allow her to protect her quality of life whilst the brand continues to flourish around her. She tells me that in the various discussions preceding her eventual decision to commit to the company. Her being based in London was always non-negotiable. So now let's talk about this neutral color palette. We see here there's a theme of neutrals, neutral tones. We see a bit of black, white, ivory, beige, khaki, camel that really allowed the focus to be on the details of the garments. With this minimal color palette, I feel it's very like warmer toned. We're seeing a lot of more so warmer tones. We're seeing like gold tone accents. We're seeing gold tone hardware on the belts, on the bags. We're seeing the wooden platforms. And I think this adds like a softness to the collection. It feels a little bit more organic in a way. It was very much a rejection of of previous creative directors, the bold prints that we would see that were very common of the 2000s. And even Phoebe Philo stated this herself, it can be difficult for designers to step into someone else's shoes, but for me, Celine was a clean slate. And the article goes on to say, Phoebe means this quite literally. Rather than integrating the new designs into existing Celine stock, she reputedly ditched every last gold chain handbag in a dramatic over the night clean out last November. This neutral color palette choice was very intentional and she would, with later collections, we would see different approaches to color. The next point I want to talk about is the use of soft fabrics. The collection incorporated very luxurious and lightweight materials that really enhanced the sense of fluidity with the designs. We have silk, crepe, very lightweight wools that were utilized to create this sense of ease and movement. And I think Phoebe Philo always, always, always keeps the concept of comfort in mind. The importance of women being able to like move in these clothes, the idea of movement and how women can move comfortably in these clothes. So we're seeing this movement, lightness, fluidity, which is something we're gonna see throughout Celine. And the next point I wanna talk about is this emphasis of refined details. While this collection was very minimalist, there was such an emphasis on the details and refining the details. We see a lot of delicate pleating, subtle draping, very precise tailoring. This is what adds interest and depth to very clean designs. When we go back to the arms, the fabric draping really allowed for comfort. And I'm just gonna read this quote here. On one hand, Phoebe refers to her luxuriously utilitarian collection as a wardrobe, a practical ABC of clothes, an understatement that is made explicitly in Jurgen Teller's inspired advertising campaign, which rejects the celebrity model in favor of prosaic close-ups of the garments. The final point I wanna talk about, I'm just gonna gloss over it because I feel like I talk about it in so many videos, but we're gonna talk about the accessories here. We saw this collection introduce very notable accessories like the classic bag. We saw that motif featured like belts and bracelets that became very much a popular item for Celine. And again, like the wooden shoes, it feels like very much like a nod to some of her works at Chloe and also softening the looks here with those like very wooden heels. So in conclusion, Phoebe Philo's Celine debut runway collection was very highly influenced for the brand. It really set the stage for the brands. I would say very much like subsequent minimal aesthetics. I don't think all of her collection were minimal. And if anything, there were a lot of collections that were very bold, bright, were very much like an opposite to some of the aesthetic choices that were made in this collection here. But I think it really did set the tone for a lot of what she would do throughout Celine. And it really positioned Celine again as a luxury fashion powerhouse. This collection was very well received by critics. In an interview, she talked about how she really wanted to 
go to like the heritage of the brand and how it has its deep roots like Celine's deep roots are in Parisian sportswear creating separates and for her she stated she really wanted to capture what she described Celine's soul of menswear which I found very interesting and Tim Blanks when he was interviewing her about this collection he said how there was this feeling of soft and toughness and it's kind of like how Phoebe Philo is there's a softness to her but also this toughness kind of like the way mothers gotta be and it's okay to be tough and I think a lot of women are drawn to that and while I don't think this is an aesthetic for everyone I think it was certainly like very refreshing for the time and I think she really did capture this desire to be both like tough and soft kind of this duality of how to be a modern woman or a gentle woman and embracing your toughness but also embracing your softness so anyways that's my video i don't know if i'm gonna make this a series i just love looking at this collection and i would love to know is there anything about this collection that really spoke to you is there anything that resonated with your sense of style i really liked how phoebe philo was very much inspired by menswear like she looked at the detailing of like military wear kind of that like soul of menswear i could just talk about celine for hours i'm just super excited for our upcoming collection i know i'm gonna be like so broke please let me know i'm not the only one thank you so much for joining me in another video and i hope to see you in the next one bye